Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing the Llama Lord in a 15 plus 2 game on LeeChess.org. Okay, let's play D4 against Llama Lord. I recognize this player's username. I don't remember how I recognize it, though. So, let's see what we get. I'm playing a main line. Alright, so I usually play Knight C3. It's my preferred treatment of this position, inviting the Nimzo Indian. Let's play queen c2, just defending the knight. Black castle is the most flexible move. I think I'll play knight f3. You can also play a3. And this knight f3 is kind of non-forcing in that regard, so it's not completely surprising that black has a wide choice at his disposal. He goes with d5. That's not a move I have encountered here before, I think. I'm going to play bishop g5 and just pin this knight. If d takes c4, I'm thinking about playing e4, whereupon e5 will be threatened, as will bishop take c4, simply regaining the pawn. So this pin looks useful to me. c5 could be played by black. Sometimes they try to pop the queen out to a5 real quickly. But given the fact that the queen is kind of needed to defend f6, I wonder if black would do that. Here I'm thinking bishop h4, just keeping the pin. If g5, bishop back to g3. g4, I can just move my knight away. Black will have loosened themselves pretty significantly on the king side, so bishop h4 is usually how you want to react in such scenarios. And black continues with c5. So here, if I play e3 now, I wonder if they could play something along the lines of uh, g5, bishop g3, g4, knight d2, and then a capture on c4. I'm trying to prove that the d pawn is weak, because that would open up the queen on that particular pawn. So I might want to insert c takes d5 before doing anything else. But the thing that bothers me about that is... If c takes d5, black may respond with c takes d4 in between move, forcing me to capture with the knight, and then play queen takes d5, and I'm not sure white has much there. So e3 is the move I would like to play, but given that line I just mentioned, I'm a little bit torn here. Although I also feel I'll get pretty good compensation in that line. So you know what? I'm going to risk it. And if they really want to venture g5, then we're going to have a sharp game. It'll be interesting nonetheless. So let's say g5, bishop g3. Uh, I think I was then saying g4. Knight d2. C takes d4. E takes d4. Okay, we'll look at it after the game since black played something else. But that would have been very interesting had that been played. So knight c6 just putting pressure on the center. I think rook d1 is a pretty reasonable move now. Defending. As usual, in this queen c2 Nimzo Indian, white's a little bit behind in development compared to black. Yeah, I still think rook d1 would be the move here. Good way to offload some of the defensive tasks from this knight. So now with g5, g4, I don't have to be too concerned. I could even play knight e5 in that case. So black captures, all right. Yeah, let's recapture with our pawn. Nice and consistent. So if allowed, I'll just try to develop my light square bishop and then castle. I'm not sure if I'll send it to e2 or d3. That remains to be seen. d3 would be more active, but I don't want to block my rook's defense of d4 in every case. So that's why I'm not sure exactly which square I should commit it to. Black plays b6, all right. Maybe intending bishop a6, so trying to pressure this c4 pawn. I'm still thinking bishop e2, especially in the case of this bishop a6 move. Yeah, 
it might be nice, let's say if bishop e2, bishop a6, it may be nice just to castle. And if d takes c4, black is not capturing with tempo. But I wonder if I should even give that pawn. I was thinking of pushing d5 then, but I'm not sure how that would turn out. That's an option. It's playable. Hmm. So bishop e2 or bishop d3. The other thing is, if bishop d3, I wonder if this g5 idea is again playable. g5, bishop g3, g4, and then if the knight moves, take on d4. I could capture on d5, but black could even take with a queen if they wanted to play actively. I think bishop e2 is what's called for here, so I'll just go with that. I wouldn't be completely surprised to see black move the bishop back to e7 in an effort to break the pin. That's another reason why e2 might be preferable to d3, because if black does break the pin in that way, and my bishop is on d3, knight b4 could be threatened. Okay, so here I'm strongly considering castling and letting them take the c4 pawn with the intention of just bashing through with d5. That looks really interesting and a lot of fun. <laughs> I could also take on d5, which would, I think, virtually force black to take on e2, and then I could take with a queen. It's questionable whether I have anything there, though. Whereas if I castle, let's say bishop takes c4 is played then, I can trade the bishops, play d5, and that hits the knight, also threatens d takes e6. If black were to play, let's say e takes d5, I think knight takes d5 comes... At a very awkward time for black. Yeah, the bishop would be under attack. I'd be threatening discoveries on f6. That could be bad. What if I castle and they take on c3? Am I prepared for that turn of events? I guess I could do something similar. I could even take with a pawn, maybe. Or queen takes. Probably nothing wrong with queen takes. Yeah, let's do it. Just get the king to safety. And I hope that Llama Lord makes a quick decision and takes on c4 so I can push through with d5. But they may sense that something is up and decide to slow down. I probably should have looked at queen a4 on the previous move too. It, it wouldn't have won material because black could always drop the bishop back to b7 or maybe play queen c8. But these two pieces are undefended. And I always stress stuff like taking accounting of the undefended pieces. So I probably should have considered that move. Hmm, Black's going to take me up on that offer. Okay. Well, let's see if I can met out some punishment then. D5. Just going to think about it for a second. I think it's good, but it doesn't hurt to take an extra couple seconds to verify what you've already calculated. It's entirely thematic, too. I mean, we've got a rook poised on the file with black's queen on the same file. And when you have an isolated pawn like that, you typically, if you, if you can advance it and open lines, you typically want to do that. You see this in IQP positions, isolated queen's pawn positions. And even though I'm down a pawn here, it still applies. In fact, it applies even more because since I'm down a pawn, I should be playing for compensation. Again, on the previous move, queen a4 could come into consideration attacking the knight and also the bishop, but black had bishop take c3. So I didn't look at that any further. This move, however, is going to be tough for black to meet. I think they're going to have to go through some contortions, and they may be in a desperate position already. I mean, the line I calculated here was e takes d5, knight takes d5, and then g5. So trying to get rid of the pin on the knight. I could play knight takes b4 then. And I'd be opening up a, a discovery on their queen. Okay, so it may go down this line. We'll see. So just to expand on that variation. So knight takes d5, g5, knight takes b4. Then I think knight takes b4 is forced. Attacking my queen. And I could play queen takes c4 then. And that looked very promising to me originally. 
prior to castling on move 12 because Wax Queen is under attack and also this knight is flapping in the wind. If Queen E7, I think stuff like Rook F E1, perhaps even a sacrifice on G5, but it might not be good. What else could I do here? I could take on F6 first. I could play Bishop takes F6, and then after Queen takes F6, then take on D5. I'm not sure I'm winning anything huge there, but it looks good. I'm playing Queen takes C4 on the next move. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to pass up Knight takes D5 here, but I'm just trying to somewhat forecast how this would go if Black plays G5. I mean, on G5, maybe Bishop takes G5 is just crushing now that I think about it. That almost just wins everything. Okay, I'm going to play this because it's going to be a good problem to have after G5, like what to calculate. I see already at least a couple promising continuations, so even queen takes c4 is probably a good move here. But I really would like to sack on g5. I think sacking on g5 might be the proper way to punish black. But you got to be careful about mindsets like that because when you start slipping into um, you know, storylines that you think should occur in a game, you may lose your objectivity. So I'll try not to do that. So if knight takes g5, if they were to reply with, uh, uh, reply with knight takes d5, I would just mate them on h7. But knight takes g5, h takes g5, bishop takes g5. It's a lot of nice material, but am I winning? Or a lot of um, potential threats, threats, I should say, but am I winning because of that? I don't know. There's also this knight takes b4 line that I was looking at. So knight takes b4, knight takes b4, queen takes c4. I'm spoiled for choice here. <laughs> What about bishop takes d5? Bishop takes, or bishop takes g5, rather. h takes g5, knight takes g5. There the threat is knight takes f6, queen takes f6, queen h7, mate. They could play rook e8, however. Giving the king a flight square on f8. And I could take b4, but they have knight takes once again. And that looks good, but not winning yet. Hmm. So knight takes g5, h takes g5, bishop takes g5. Threatening f6, threatening the bishop. Black could sacrifice their queen. Queen takes d5. Or maybe play knight takes d5 instead. And then say bishop takes d8, rook a takes d8, queen takes c4. They have knight c to e7 at the end of that line. And they've got two minor pieces plus a rook for the queen. Strange material imbalance. I've got a couple extra pawns. Hmm. Again, queen takes c4 just looks, I mean... Everything else being equal, that's a good option as well. I might just play queen takes c4. I mean, I'm, I'm very confident there's other moves. I should probably look at knight takes b4, knight takes b4, then queen takes c4 as well, because that's a line that I strongly considered. Black has queen e7 there. And if rook e1, queen c5, they're not dead yet. Hmm. Just going to spend a few more seconds looking and then probably go with queen takes c4. Yeah, let's do that. I'm playing some practical chess here, but I think black still has a lot of issues to figure out. I wasn't sure about the sacrifices on g5. And if you're not sure and your position is good anyways, you can just play some normal move. 
you should probably prefer that, especially if time is a factor. I mean, if I had if I had 20 minutes on my clock, I wouldn't mind spending 10 of them to calculate a forced win here. But with a a 15 minute game, you have to make practical decisions, and this is one of them. So one line I was looking at here was knight a5, queen takes b4, knight takes d5. And I was thinking I could just play queen g4 in that case. Black would be pinned on the g5 pawn. I don't think f5 is a move they can seriously contemplate after that, although they might play it. I could play queen h5, g takes h4, queen g6 check, and I'll win that h6 pawn with check. That's getting a little far afield, but if you saw that line, you can kind of see what I might be going for there. It was nice having my queen on c2 pointed at the h7 square, but attacking c6 is also very convenient as well. This is the longest that Llama Lord has spent on a move. <laughs> they know the position is very sharp now. Every decision matters from this point forward for both sides. More so for black, though. The stakes are higher for them. They can't play a normal move like rook c8 just defending the knight because I take b4 and that's a discovery on the queen. And then if they were to take back, I would take with my queen and I still have that discovery and I will have time to save my bishop after that. So I think knight a5 is probably what black will end up doing. And the game will go queen takes b4, knight takes d5, and I'll probably play queen g4. They could play queen c8 then, offering a trade and unpinning on the d-file. I could trade queens and then take on d5 and end up winning a pawn on h4, but that's not game over. I mean, they could get their rook into c2 at the end of that variation. So some bailout continuation like that may be the best that black has, just giving a pawn and trying to escape to an endgame. If black doesn't lose a piece or get checkmated here, that's probably going to be a success for them in my eyes. So I'm spending my time right now trying to work through the ramifications of knight a5, queen takes b4, knight takes d5, queen g4. Probably on queen c8 in that case, maybe queen h5. Because then I'm attacking the knight and queen takes h6 would be threatened. If they played queen e6 at that point, probably bishop takes g5 is good. Among other moves, like even rook takes d5 looks tempting. So I'm trying to put my quote-unquote downtime to good use here. Think on your opponent's time. In a sharp position, that can be really helpful if you've already worked out the repercussions of various moves your opponent can throw at you. Okay, so they take with the knight. I think clearly I'm going to take with the rook in this case. Also, taking on c6 is possible. Opening up the attack on h6. Maybe their idea is queen f6 now that I think about it. So if rook takes d5, queen f6, and then they're holding the knight this way, I could take on g5 there. Probably that's good somehow. Yeah, knight takes g5 looks pretty terrifying for black. But also queen takes c6 is coming to mind. Queen f6 in that case, queen takes d5, take on h4. Black structure is a mess, but they're not getting killed yet. Nah, let's take with the rook. We'll play the sane tempo move. I think queen f6, knight takes g5 is going to be convincing, so I will likely go for that.
Of course, they could play their queen somewhere else, too. That also guards the knight, like e8 or c8. But both of those moves are so passive, I kind of just assume I'm going to have a sacrifice on g5 of the bishop or the knight. On pretty much any logical move, I think I take on g5 next move. Hello to some familiar faces in the chat. Tony Rowe, Jay Postuma. Saw some other ones who have since disappeared from that list. So black does play queen c8. Okay, so are we just going all in on g5? Be hard to believe that I can't. So bishop takes g5. They can't even take because of rook takes, and that will be checkmate in short order. So bishop takes, probably they're going to play something like knight e5. Try to trade down, but let's keep going. So bishop takes. The time situation is getting closer. We've got that two-second increment, so no big deal. Although I'd like to stay above, say, you know, two, three minutes. That would be nice. Hmm, 97. I didn't see that move. I don't know if it's any good, but I didn't see it. <laughs> so queen takes c8, rook takes c8. I can take e7 and just grind the endgame up a pawn. Anything more aggressive. Queen h4, they take my rook. Then I'm down a rook. I'd have to play for mate. If queen takes b4, their idea is knight takes d5. So I can't really do that. Can't go queen g4. Their queen covers that square. Yeah, I think I'll have to try to win the end game up a pawn as much as I would like to stay in the middle game and attempt to win. Queen takes b4, knight takes d5, queen over to h4, they take here, knight takes. I guess queen takes would be a perpetual. Nah, I don't really want to go in for that though. Yeah, I think queen takes c8. Let's play this end game. So then take e7 and, like I said, try to win up the pawn there. Okay, so this way we can play rook d7 at the end of this line. Just deciding if I want to do that or if I should protect my b2 pawn. Because I'm thinking rook d7, bishop f6, and then I guess maybe b3 in that case. Yeah, let's play this to start with our two minutes and change remaining. Because I can take a7, but they're going to take b2. So it may be best to preserve my slight material edge here. Yeah, let's go b3. I'd like to make a luft move as well, like move one of these pawns, the g3 pawn, or the g2 pawn to g3, most likely. For now, I just wonder how black will deal with this, because my thinking is if they play a6 or a5, I have rook d6, and... There's a lot of juicy targets on the 6th rank. And rook a8 is such a cringy move. I um, would not want to make that move if I were black. They could try for activity. They could play something like rook fd8, rook takes a7, rook c2. But my knight covers the d2 entry point, so I shouldn't have too many issues there. You guys know I like playing endgames, so <laughs> an endgame up a pawn is just another another game of chess to me. Hmm. So they're modifying my concept. So rook takes a7. They're going to try to put their rooks on the second rank. But the thing is, I don't think they, they have a good way to target f2, at least as far as I see. I mean, they, they need to get their bishop involved in attacking the square, but it's tough, right? They need to maneuver it to, for instance, the c5 square. I'm thinking rook a6, trying to attack this pawn. Yeah, let's do that. They could play... Whoa, that's, that's a blunder of a rook. 
Okay. <laughs> well, that's short-circuited quickly. I wonder if they just got confused and didn't realize that they didn't have this other rook down here. Okay, so black resigned. Well, I was thinking they were going to try rook e to e2, and then after rook takes b6, play bishop e7 and try to come to c5. Ah, but you know what? If rook e e2 here take bishop e7, I have knight d4, which would fork the two rooks. So they can't do that. Bishop c5, rook b8 check, and then I'll pick up one of the rooks. So before we click over to the to the analysis board, some things to consider in this game. I think my position was good right around here. And it's possible I have something better than bishop e2. I mean, I was debating between e2 and d3. Maybe take on d5 is possible as well. But, yeah, I'd say I'm more so interested in uh, the position that comes up after I induce black to play g5, basically force them to play g5. Because here, I feel like black's game is teetering on the brink of totally lost. I just wasn't sure how to navigate this plethora of options I have. Bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, knight takes b4, and queen takes c4. All four of those moves were my main candidates, and there might even be another move or two I should look at, like even stuff like queen f5. So I had four strong candidate moves to consider with, I don't know, eight or nine minutes on my clock. And I spent a good amount of time here. This is my biggest think of the game, I believe. And came up with something decent in queen takes c4, like it eventually netted me a pawn, but it feels like there should be more. So that's what I'm going to look at in the analysis. And I think after that, black did well to find this 97 move. I just missed that move. I previously stated that Backward knight moves are tough to see in chess, and this is a good example of that. Opening up the attack on my queen and also the attack on d5. <laughs> yeah, Llama Lord watches the channel. <laughs> so he's going to have his dream come true and see the analysis very soon. I'll be posting this game in about an hour. So, yeah, knight e7 was nice, and then I think I have to enter this endgame. Perhaps there's a way to even here keep material on board, but that would entail some risky decisions without a lot of time remaining. So I just played it safe and went for the pawn up endgame, which soon won uh, thanks to Llama Lord's blunder, but it's probably technically lost here. Although, it should be mentioned, I mean, if they play rook e6, yes, I'm up two pawns, but my pieces aren't as coordinated as I, was, I would like them to be. So I'm going to have to take baby steps going forward. Like, I might have to play... Let's say g3, h4, king g2, little moves like that. Try to get my rook in the action. Maybe eventually play rook e1 and trade down. If I could trade off one pair of rooks here, I'll almost certainly be winning if I can keep the two pawns. If black manages to win my a pawn, they have some outside drawing chances. Or maybe some very real drawing chances because notice my knight is somewhat corralled by this bishop. Like my knight is uh, really hurting for useful attacking squares to go to. So at some point, I have to figure out what to do about that. All right, so let's click over to the analysis board. The analysis popped up already. Okay, well, this is promising. The first thing I saw was the average centi pawn loss, and I'm sorry it's cut off by the the bottom of the screen, but it's 14 average centi pawn loss for me with only one inaccuracy, zero blunders, zero mistakes. My opponent's was 46 with... One inaccuracy, two mistakes, one blunder. So let's go through. Queen c2, Nimzo. If you're not sure what to play against the Nimzo Indian, I can definitely recommend this line. In fact, in my d4 repertoire on Chessable, I analyze this continuation. It makes sense because you're stopping black from doubling your pawns when they capture. The downside is you lose some time. Queen c2 is not a move that helps you much in the development department. You're not getting your minor pieces out. So, as I mentioned in the game, black tends to have a lead in development early on in Nimzos. Especially queen c2 Nimzos. Yeah, and here, there's also a3 if white wants to induce black to take on c3 immediately, but knight f3 is nice and flexible as well. It was a pretty trendy move a couple years ago. Still is. Yeah, now d5. I think this move is perfectly reasonable. I just don't recall having faced it before in this exact position. 
<laughs> Llama Lord is discussing his rook takes a2 decision on the final move of the game. c5 is one of the critical lines. So there's a line that goes c5, d takes c5, knight a6. And after g3, knight takes c5, bishop g2, there's a lot of theory. Knight e4, castles, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, bishop back to e7, e4. There's a ton of games in the database. I've played this position on my channel before. I've also played it over the board a couple times. Although, without any particular success, I must say. I had a game against Akshat Chandra in this line, and he knew what to do with black, and uh, the game was eventually drawn, but he was pressing from the black side. So, theoretically speaking, I think c5 is one of black's best options against knight f3. So, black played d5, and I pinned. So they could take on c4 here, but I would consider playing e3 or e4 most likely. The engine wants to play a3, but probably pushing one of the pawns is a more natural move. Threatening e5 and threatening bishop takes c4. So black instead played h6. I kept the pin. Hmm. The engine wants to take, but I think keeping the pin is uh, a more normal move. So now c5, okay, so creating maximum tension. And I played e3. So the computer didn't like my last couple of moves. You know, sometimes I do worry that with this fragile structure and all this tension, that black's development edge could count for something. So let's just see what the computer has to say about this. Take, I probably would have taken with the pawn had this occurred. Now knight c6. Let's say I play rook d1 again here, because if I move my bishop, black might play d take c4 and open up the attack here. So I might need rook d1. This is also one of the downsides of having the queen on c2 is you lose some control over the d4 square. Now a bishop move or a6. The engine thinks black is okay. And this evaluation is pretty close to equal. But suffice it to say, white might not have anything here according to the computer. Yeah, so that probably means that there's a better way of combating this line. I don't know what that is. Maybe bishop takes f6, but it's hard to believe that bishop takes f6 leads to much for white. This looks like a pretty tame continuation. Black has the bishop pair. White has a space edge, slightly. Food for thought. I don't have all the answers. So, yeah, as played, black pumped up the pressure on d4 with knight c6, and I played rook d1. I like this move in many d-pawn structures. Opposing the queen on d8. Also defending d4. It was an omen for the future when black experienced problems on the d-file with that d5 move. Maybe right around here black should consider the move that the engine is pointing out. Bishop back to e7. Because that would solve the issue of the pin. And in some cases allow black to use the b4 square. So it may be prudent just to re retreat right now. So b6, on the other hand, I played bishop e2. So here I was discussing the difference between bishop e2 and bishop d3. If I play bishop d3, let's just say black plays bishop e7, like this move I alluded to. The fact that knight b4 is threatened, forking the queen and the bishop, is annoying, because that means I might have to take a timeout for a3. I mean, maybe a3 is useful, but still. So that's one thing to think about uh, when you're comparing squares for a bishop. Like, where will the bishop be more exposed? A lot of times d3 will be preferable because the bishop just tends to be more active there, but I, I know in making that d4 repertoire, there were some cases where it was better to have the bishop on e2. I can recall a, a Dutch line where that was the case. So here I played bishop e2. I can see the evaluation's about equal. And black has probably equalized, especially if they drop the bishop back. So bishop a6, and now I just castled, which was... Uh, kind of a trap. I was trying to bait black into taking the pawn on c4. I did think about c takes d5 as well, but when playing down a bit in raiding, sorry Llama Lord, I know you're only 10 points away from me in Lee chess rating, but I suspect I'm somewhat higher rated than you over the board. Although you could be like an IM or someone in disguise. I never know. I don't know much about you, Llama Lord. So please forgive me if you're actually a title player, a very strong title player. <laughs> But my point is I like to keep tension against lower-rated players because I, it increases the chance that they'll make a mistake. And 
I trust myself more in a complicated position than I do them, if that makes sense. Like, if you're the better player, you should give your opponent more chances to make mistakes because you can navigate the complexities better than they can. That may not always be the case. Like, you might come up with an opponent who's lower rated than you but happens to be just as good at, at calculating lines as you are. Maybe they're just bad positionally or something, but that's a good rule of thumb to go by. So I castled and black took on c4. So, yeah, they need to play some sort of defensive move here. I was thinking... What was I considering here? I think I was even thinking of bringing the bishop back to b7 and maybe admitting that it doesn't belong on a6, but that seems extreme. Let's see what the computer believes. So take... It wants me to take here. I think I mentioned this line, and I was going to take with the queen. But is there some problem with that? g5? Probably the sacrifice on g5 is not working here. So the engine just likes this line and what? Queen d5 at the end? Rook c8 defending the knight. And it says black is doing more than okay. Black is a tiny bit better, despite the damage to their structure. It's probably because they have such a grip on d5. And um, aside from this blip over here on the king side, structurally, black is doing great. Maybe white's play is grinding to a halt. I'll be very unlikely to get in d5 without sacrificing that pawn, so I can see why the engine likes this. Point being, main point, black needs something accurate here, and taking on c4 seems to overlook the, the main idea of pushing d5 for white. So Lamalor took, I took, and d takes c4 is going to be very similar. d5 is just begging to be played in that case. Without calculating anything, I would just say this is even worse for black because there's another potential target. Loose bishop on a6. Oh yeah, one other thing I, I should mention because I mentioned it during the game. Queen a4 I thought about attacking these, but black has remedies to that, like bishop b7 if necessary. But always take an accounting of your loose pieces. Yeah, so now d5 and the position is desperate for black. They can't insert bishop takes c3 because I take here with tempo on the queen and the bishop is hanging. So white wins a piece in that case. The engine wants to play knight e7, but this looks truly awful for black. I'm going to win my material back and take on f7 next move. They're going to have a shattered king. So as played, e takes d5. And I took with the knight. And now g5 does seem forced because... Otherwise, how does black deal with the smorgasbord of threats going on? Knight takes f6 check being one of the prime ones with the discovery on the queen. Knight takes b4. Same thing, discovery. I thought maybe bishop d6 would be played, but yeah, I mean, something like this looks awful. Attack here. White's attacking with no material deficit. Black's king is wide open as well. So it's pretty trivial there. So good decision by Lama Lord to play g5. Yeah, now this was the the pivotal moment. Good example of a position where it's hard to wade through the candidate moves, even though you know your position is good. It's really frustrating when you mess up positions like this. Like if you just totally botch this from here and go on to lose, that's like the worst feeling. One of the worst feelings in chess of many. <laughs> um. So the engine wants to play knight takes g5. I'm going to rank these. I'm going to rank these from best to worst for these four moves. Knight takes g5, bishop takes g5, knight takes b4, and queen takes c4. So best is this, according to the computer. Take. Yeah, and I was worried about this queen sack. I thought that they might do this. I think I was thinking rook a takes, but let's follow the computer's suggestion. Here, here, and I thought knight e7 at the very end. Okay, let's go with this move. So just trying to protect everything. I'm not sure I properly counted the material at this stage. I just assume that black has a lot of pieces for the queen. And in fact, they do. They have three minor pieces for the queen. But I also have two pawns. So that's 11 points for me and nine for them. The three minor pieces. And also black's king is open. But this position still strikes me as a little unbalanced. I probably have to start throwing my kingside pawns down the board at them if I want to convert. This is plus 2.5. Okay, this is not completely clear, though, so I don't mind not going for this continuation. What about bishop takes g5? 
This is also good according to the computer. Take. Now, I was thinking if knight takes, there's this nice reply rookie 8 freeing up the, the space for the king to run. And then if I were to continue with this and queen h7, they escape through f8. So it looks like I was correct there, but there's a quiet move, huh? So on rook e8, I can play queen takes c4 or queen f5. Well, queen f5. Queen f5 looks more natural coming towards the king. King g7 defending. Yeah, this is not so clear. Again, this is a messy continuation where in the engine eyes, engine's eyes, it's uh, more clear cut, especially if I take on c4, I'm plus two. But for a human, when you're in time pressure, I mean, you want to keep it simple most of the time. Okay, so bishop takes g5 was good. What about knight takes b4? This move, roughly plus one. Take. Again, queen f5 is the top move. Okay, this is only half a pawn better. They can play knight d5. I didn't even see that move. I thought they would play here. And again, taking on g5 is good. Okay, so even that was good. And finally, what about the move that was played in the game? So queen takes c4, plus two. Okay, I can live with that. I mean, if the top move knight takes g5 was plus two and a half, I think, once I went through that line. Let me just scroll through that again because it seemed fairly forced. So this line is plus two and a half, and my move, which just wins upon cleanly with few complications, is plus two. I think that's a decent trade-off, uh, just rationalizing what happened. I didn't maximize my edge, but... I also minimize the complications and time pressure. So that's okay. So queen takes c4. Black took on d5. I thought for a moment about queen takes c6, but I figured black had a defense. What was the move I was looking at? I think queen f6 is what I thought. This line. Maybe white can go and attack these weak pawns on the king side. But rook takes d5 just looked better. Temple on the queen. Now queen c8. Best move according to the computer. For some reason, I was mainly looking at queen f6, and I thought the capture on g5 would be good, either bishop or knight. Yeah, probably bishop is more forceful, huh? Because if take, and then say king h7, I'm just going to win. I mean, even like queen h4 check and rook h5 is going to win. So, well played by, by Llama Lord, queen c8. And here I took with the bishop on g5. Knight takes is also good. Is there much of a difference between the two? Yeah, both about the same. Plus 1.3. So bishop takes, and again, best move, 97. Which, as I said, I completely missed. This is just rough for black, because they're down a pawn, and also their king is getting shredded. So I think that was a victory for him, that he was able to trade the queens here. So I went into this endgame, but rook d4... Is the better move, but hmm, this could be kind of similar, right? As far as the end game that it could produce, pawn up end game. Here, black structure is a bit better compared to the game. In the game, they had isolated f and h pawns, and here they're connected. Although this is still good for white, I can definitely appreciate that. So I instead played queen takes c8. They took it the a rook. I was wondering if taking with the f rook was better because. As you saw in the game, after this trade occurred, rook d7 was a double attack, but in this case it would not be, since black rook still stands here. So maybe that was preferable. But they took with the a rook, and now we traded. I thought rook b4 I saw on the screen just a second ago, but bishop takes e7, seems very clear. Get the rook in, attack the bishop and the pawn. Bishop f6, and... Yep, looks like I was correct to save the b-pawn. Because if I trade, I think this makes it a little easier for black. And note that rook b1 is not a cure-all because, yeah, black can play rook c2 and defend the bishop. Even if the bishop had to flee somewhere, um, I couldn't go take b6 next move because of rook c1. So I played b3 just saving my pawn and keeping the attack on a7. And then rook f8. Now I took. Yeah, because it's an unenviable situation for black. If they play rook a8, they're so passive that I think white's going to 
have a fairly easy task of making progress here and hopefully eventually converting. So Lamalor decided to pitch the A-pawn and play for counterplay on the second rank. It just, just transpires they don't have much in that regard either. So I played rook a6, eyeing that b-pawn. Yeah, and of course, here the game was blundered away, but still. So I was thinking um, black might try this line. And then going here, looking to play bishop c5 and trying to get at f2. But the fact that I have knight d4 just ends all resistance, forking the two rooks. Just over immediately. If bishop c5, I can throw in this check and then take one of the rooks. So their best bet may be something like, I don't know, rook e6 here. But as I said, two pawns up. You can see the engine now wants to make a luft move. That's exactly what I was talking about. Just play some useful move, get rid of the back rank issue. There's no rush here if you're white. So you can afford to slowly crawl forward on the king side. Get this rook activated. A good goal for white would be to trade a pair of rooks, as I was describing. That would totally kill black's future threats against f2. And white should be well on the way to converting up both pawns. Or two pawns. Still, though, I mean, you can see the eval. It's it's going to be some hard going. It's um, it's not plus two, let's say. It's plus closer to one, much closer to one. So the engine is acknowledging that white does have some uh, obstacles to overcome before winning this. I think this should be a win for white, though. If black's going to save this, they would have to play like absolutely perfect, and they might need a little help from white. All right, so interesting game, especially when things heated up with white getting in d5, but... I think when black allows me to make that push, for all intents and purposes, they're in serious trouble. And the damage has already been done to black's position. But this was an interesting discussion surrounding this move, what to do in a position where you have multiple strong candidate moves. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.